So in this video we're going to look at how to break down a kind of nasty hybrid circuit. And I call this a series type hybrid because it's, well, basically you have two big parts that are in series with each other, as you'll soon see. And even though I call this a nasty series type hybrid, this is actually more like the type of thing that I'd expect you to be able to do, at least after going through this a couple of times and practicing on your own with the same circuit, because hopefully after this video, you'll be able to see more readily how to break down stuff like this. So first, it's going to help to label each of these individual resistors. There are 10 total resistors. so we're just going to give them numbers, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, R9, and R10. In fact, I think it would be wise if you pause the video now and take a picture of this on your phone or other camera so that you can refer to that picture as we go through the rest of the video because I'll be relying on you to be able to refer back to the original picture. So you should probably pause right now and take a picture. So now continuing into this, we're going to realize, yes, this is a hybrid circuit, 10 total resistors. We have our givens right here, which we had in our picture of it. And we also have the fact that the battery is a 48 volt battery. So essentially you can break this circuit into two parts, call them A and B. Each of these two parts can be broken down further, and we're not actually not going to give the further broken down parts additional names. You can if you want, but we're actually just going to replace them by their equivalent resistance. But you can kind of see what is basically going on here. You have a battery right here. It actually doesn't matter where I have the battery to make a circuit, but in terms of figuring out what's going on in the circuit, it really does matter where I have the battery. So I decided to put the battery right here. So current comes out of the left part of the battery. In other words, positive the flow of positive charge, even though we know electrons flow the opposite way, electrons would flow counterclockwise, but the current we're saying is going to have a general clockwise flow. So it's going to come out of the positive terminal. It ends up now hitting this junction. And in this junction, it either goes through 9 or it goes through the rest of this. But either way, the current has to go through this whole box that we're calling A. After it does that and kind of merges back together, it then skips across this wire and enters the area that we call B. After entering B, it then comes back to the negative terminal of the battery, the ground. So, first the current goes through A, then the current goes through B. So essentially, we're dealing with a series type hybrid. So the equivalent resistance of this whole circuit is going to be equal to the resistance of A plus the resistance of B. About half of the rest of these slides will be devoted to figuring out what those resistances are. And then the rest of them will be devoted to figuring out the individual currents through each of those 10 resistors and the voltage drops across each of those 10 resistors. So we need to find these equivalent resistances. Now, first we'll note that part A, the part that's in red, is basically a parallel element between the 9 ohm resistor and the rest of A. That's something that we're going to need to keep in mind. And in other words, the current either goes through the 9 ohm resistor. In other words, it hits this junction. It could, it could go through the 9 ohm resistor and then skip across and enter B. Or it could, instead of going through the 9 ohm resistor, skip across and enter this other stuff before skipping across and entering B. So th this is a parallel thing. There's an either or going on. Now, part B is basically a parallel type circuit between the 42 ohm resistor and the rest. So that's something that we're going to keep in mind and we're going to break this down further. Now you're going to need to pay close attention to how these are broken down. I'm going to trust that you're either familiar enough with the series and parallel and simple hybrid types of circuits to do the calculations of equivalent resistance um, on your own or that you can kind of follow along as we go through them. If not, you should go back and watch some of the previous videos on how to do that. 
So let's break down A, the thing that's on the left. Notice that I've just replaced the blue thing on the right that we called B. I've just replaced it with a resistor that I'm calling B. That's how we're going to leave it for now. But we need to break down A. So the first thing we look at in A, in trying to break this down further, it's like, yeah, we have a 6 ohm that's in series with the rest of this stuff, and the whole thing's in parallel with this 9 ohm resistor, but what about the rest of this stuff? Well, these two 9 ohm resistors up here, those are in series. That's an easy calculation to do. You know how to deal with resistors that are in series with each other. You add them up. So these two 9 ohm resistors can essentially be replaced by an 18 ohm resistor. Notice I've put it in red here because there's not actually an 18 ohm resistor here. It's just that we have an element that has an equivalent resistance that is equal to 18 ohms. And I've done the same thing for this part down here. In other words, if the current did enter this branch, it would first go through the 24 ohm resistor, then it would go through the 12 ohm resistor. Those are two resistors in series, equivalent to 36 ohms. So I have replaced this element by an equivalent resistance of 36 ohms. Notice it really doesn't matter where I put it. I could have put it up here, I could have put it back here, as long as I make sure that it's on this arm. I could have even reshaped this arm to have some funny weird type of shape like what you might have in the little fibers in your stomach that break down food or whatever. Anyway, I, it doesn't matter. As long as it's part of this parallel element, it's fine. So I, I just decided to put it right here. Now, Notice again, I mentioned parallel element. Essentially now we have a 36 ohm resistor in series with, or sorry, in parallel with an 18 ohm resistor. Well, use your parallel formula. 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over the resistance of this plus 1 over the resistance of the other one. So I'll trust you to either verify or understand that 1 over 18 plus 1 over 36 is the same thing as 1 over 12 because the 1 over 18 becomes a 2 over 36 when finding the least common denominator and that becomes added to 1 over 36 becomes 3 over 36 which is 1 over 12. So if you didn't follow that you should do the calculation on your own on paper. So now you see that we essentially have the equivalent of a 12 ohm resistor in series with a 6 ohm resistor. So that can be replaced by, ta-da, an 18 ohm resistor. And again, it doesn't matter whether I had put it up here or whether I backtracked and put it earlier in the wire down here. So I actually did that so that it's more straightforward to tell that this whole thing is actually in parallel with the 9 ohm resistor, which we recognized before. In other words, the current comes out of the battery and either goes through this whole thing or it goes through the 9 ohm resistor. That's parallel. Well. 1 over 18 plus 1 over 9 becomes 1 over 6. So the equivalent resistance, therefore, since 1 over the equivalent resistance is 1 over the first plus 1 over the second, well, we need to invert both sides to get the equivalent resistance by itself. So we simply get that the equivalent resistance is 6 ohms. So we have found that the resistance of part A, the equivalent resistance of part A in the circuit is 6 ohms. So now let's look at part B. Luckily, part B is more straightforward because we only have four resistors instead of six. Every time you add one or two more resistors you increase the complexity of the circuit by a good bit especially if you're doing it such that you're essentially adding a hybrid. But here we, we really just have a relatively easy type of hybrid. We have a resistor that's in parallel with a simple series hybrid. So, let's see how we break this down further. Well, we want to get rid of this part right here. In other words, we see that this 20 and 5 are a parallel element that's in series with this 3 ohm resistor. Well, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20 becomes 1 over 4. So, therefore, the equivalent resistance of this is 4 ohms. Again, if you didn't follow that, make sure that you start the calculation on your own from the beginning using the formula for finding equivalent resistance of parallel resistors. So, this 4 ohm resistor is in series, well, this 4 ohm quote resistor ha, is in series with an actual 3 ohm resistor. So, that becomes a 7 ohm equivalent resistance. So, we have that right there. And now, the only thing that's left is a 7 ohm resistor in parallel with a 42 ohm actual resistor, and that becomes a 6 ohm resistor. We have now found the equivalent resistance of part B. 
So here's what you see. The current comes out of the battery, it goes through A, which has an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms, and then it goes through B, which has an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms, and then back to ground, and then the battery raises the potential again, and you actually get a full loop circuit. So now, let's see how we can use this to figure out the individual currents and voltage drops for each of the resistors, the original resistors, that is. So, first of all, for the whole circuit, A and B are in series, as we mentioned before. So we have 6 ohms for A plus 6 ohms for B gives 12 ohms as the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit. So now, we're going to do what's good practice in this situation. Find the current coming out of the battery. Well, the current coming out of the battery is, well, the battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit, and that's 4 amps. So that's going to prove quite useful. It's useful because even though we don't know the currents through the individual resistors, we do know that the net current through part A of the circuit is 4 amps. In other words, at during any given second, 4 coulombs of charge will pass through, will pass into and leave uh, A. In other words, remember that an amp is a coulomb per second. So, using that, we can figure out the voltage drop across the element that we're calling A. Well, A, remember, has an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms. We, we worked that out before. And there is a total of 4 amps of current going into and out of A. So that means that there is a voltage drop of 24 volts in part A. And you can do the same thing in part B. Part B also had an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms. Part B is in series with part A, so it has the same total current as part A. So it also has 4 amps, and we get a voltage drop of 24 volts in part B. Now notice that, in general, they're not going to be the same like this. this. This was lucky. It was lucky because of the fact that we had two parts that each had the same equivalent resistance. If I had changed some resistor values in part B, and we would have gotten something different than 6 ohms for the equivalent resistance, and therefore something different than 24 volts. But because the equivalent resistances were the same, and they were in series, which meant the same current went through each, we ended up getting the same voltage drops in this particular case for parts A and B. Now, notice I have not put a box around any of these because none of these are any of my actual answers. Now, I did put a box around this even though this wasn't requested in the original problem if you look on your cell phone from when you took a picture of the original problem, but still, finding the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit is the first thing you've got to do anyway, so I think that's box worthy. So anyway, now we know the voltage drops across the elements A and B. So now let's take a look at A. What we're going to do is we're going to go in reverse of what we did before in breaking down the individual parts to to find out the equivalent resistance. We're actually going to go from the simplest part after we broke it down all the way into gradually increasing the complexity back to the original circuit. So first, we have what we were left with at the end, and I'm going to leave B just as B, but remember that this was our last step in finding the equivalent resistance of A. But remember, A is not a 6 ohm resistor. The next step up is that A was more like an 18 ohm resistor that was in parallel with a 9. If you, if you don't believe that, then go back through the previous slides of this video where we were breaking down A and starting from the original A and then replacing each a uh, little part by its equivalent resistance. Well, we eventually got that there was an entire large part that had an equivalent resistance of 18 ohms, and that that was in parallel with a 9 ohm resistor. Well, this 9 ohm resistor was act is actually one of our original resistors. So, we know that the voltage drop across A is 24 volts, and this 9 ohm original resistor, in fact, the, this was what we called resistor 6, it's in parallel with this other stuff that we're replacing by an 18 ohm equivalent resistor. So, 
Remember, since the voltage drop across parallel elements is the same, and it's the same as the voltage drop across that whole element, if you're just talking about multiple parallel arms, that means that the voltage drop across this 9 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage drop across A, which we know. It's 24 volts. So we immediately have that the voltage drop across resistor 6, which is this 9 ohm resistor, is 24 volts. And that is one of the things we were looking for because we're looking for trying to find the voltage drop and current through each original resistor in the circuit. Well, we just found one. And now that we know the voltage drop and we also know the resistance of it, we can use ver Ohm's law, V equals IR, to calculate the current that is going through that 9 ohm resistor. So the voltage drop through resistor 6 is equal to the current through resistor 6 times the resistance of resistor 6. Well, isolate for current, plug in 24 volts for that voltage drop that we just noticed, and divide by its resistance, and you get that 2.6666666667 amps of current is passing through this 9 ohm resistor, in other words, resistor 6. So that's another Jeff Box-worthy answer. So we're going to put a nice yellow box around that, keep it in mind, and we're eventually going to group together all of our answers in a table at the, at the end of this whole problem. Now, the next thing to notice is that, well, there is, after all, an 18 ohm equivalent resistance here. And we also know that there's a 24 volt voltage drop across this because this is a completely parallel element of A. So you can use Ohm's law again, in other words, in this case, I equals V over R, we've isolated for I now, and plug in 24 volts divided by 18 ohms to find the net current that is going into and coming out of this 18 ohm resistor. We have no idea how it's distributed, but we at least know that every second there are 1.333333 coulombs of charge entering and leaving this element of the circuit. In other words, a current of 1.333333 amps. So, let's see how we can use this. Well, going back again, again, if you don't believe this, go back to some of the earlier parts of this video where we obtained the fact that this was an 18 ohm equivalent resistance. When you do that, well, this 18 ohm equivalent resistance, remember, was actually a series part of a 12 ohm equivalent resistance in series with an actual 6 ohm resistor. Except earlier when we were breaking it down, we went from this picture to this picture to get this, but this was one of our previous pictures. And so we know that there's 1.333333 amps going into this 18 ohm equivalent resistor. Well, that means that there are 1.333 amps going into this 12 ohm equivalent resistance, and since it's in series, 6 ohms going into, or sorry, 1.333 amps going into this 6 ohm actual resistor. So, we have another Jeff Boxworthy answer. The current through what we call, this was actually resistor 5, is 1.3333 amps, because remember, current is the same in any series circuit. So whatever current is going through this 12 ohm equivalent resistance is also going through this 6 ohm resistor. Otherwise, charge would leak out or jump out or um, disappear or reappear or whatever, and all kinds of nasty um, conservation laws would be violated, and that would be real bad, and physicists would cry. So anyway, since we know the current going into this 6 ohm resistor, we can use Ohm's law to find the voltage drop across that 6 ohm resistor. Well, 1.333 amps times 6 ohms becomes 8 volts, and that's the voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor, which we called resistor 5 back in the beginning. So, should also note that the voltage drop across the 12 ohm equivalent resistance, the overall voltage drop, is 16 volts. That's not a box-worthy number, but it's something that's going to be useful as we make our 12 ohm equivalent resistor reappear into our original circuit. So here's where we are right now and if you don't remember go back and check that that 12 ohm equivalent resistor was actually the equivalent of two 18 ohm res or sorry an 18 ohm resistor in parallel with a 36 ohm resistor. In other words two resistors in parallel except both of these themselves were equivalent resistors of other more fundamental resistors. 
So, and that's why I put these in quotation marks. It's not actually an 18 ohm. It's not actually a 36 ohm. That's after all why I've colored it red. But we do know the voltage drop across this equivalent 12 ohm resistor. This equivalent 12 ohm resistor is a parallel element composed of an 18 ohm equivalent resistor in parallel with a 36 ohm equivalent resistor. So, the voltage drops across those are the same. They're, they're 16 volts, just like it was for the 12 ohm resistor. And therefore, now that we know those individual voltage drops, we can figure out the current that is going into each of these parallel elements. Well, we do that by V equals IR. So therefore, I equals V over R. So the current going into the 18 ohm equivalent element is equal to, well, the voltage drop that it suffered divided by the resistance. Well, we already know that that voltage drop was 16 volts because the voltage drop for this whole thing from here to here was 16 volts. And it's like you just have two parallel waterfalls going down the same cliff, so they both drop the same height. Well, that voltage drop 16 volts divided by this 18 ohm equivalent resistance tells us that there are 0.8888888889 amps of current going this way into the 18 ohm equivalent resistance. And similarly, doing the same thing for the other part of the circuit, which has an equivalent resistance of 36 ohms, there are 0.4444444 amps of current going this way. Well, you might wonder, how is that useful? The, I mean, we weren't asked for that. But let's look at what these 18 ohm and 36 ohm equivalent resistors actually were. And I've actually put those currents in right here just to remind you what the currents were going into this. Well, the 18 ohm and 36 ohm equivalent resistors, well, the 18 ohm was actually two 9 ohm resistors in series. And the 36 ohm equivalent resistor was actually a 24 ohm and a 12 ohm in series. Well, we know the current going into here. We know the current going into here. So since these are, since the two 9 ohms are in series with each other, whatever current goes through the 18 ohm equivalent resistance is going into each of these 9 ohm resistors. First it goes through this one, then it goes through this one, but it's the same current. It hasn't spliced off either way or anything. Same for the 24 ohm and 12 ohm. Whatever current ends up going through the 12, 24 ohm resistor also later ends up going into the 12 ohm resistor. And by, by later I mean like a yocto second later or something ridiculous like that. It's a very short time period. So, since we've already calculated those currents, we know the currents that are going into each of those resistors. And by the way, these were resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, and resistor 4, if you're referring back to your original picture. Well, again, the current going into the 18 ohm resistor is the same as the current that's going into I1 and I2, because these are the actual resistors. They just ended up having the equivalent resistance that we replaced by one 18 ohm resistor, but it's they're in series, so whatever current is going into here is going into here, which goes there, and then goes there. That's 0.8888889 amps. We already got that, but now the, this act, these actually are Jeff Box-worthy answers, because these were these are our original resistors. We're asked for the currents that should be traveling through each of these original resistors, as well as their voltage drops. Well, how about the voltage drops? Well, first let's calculate, well, not calculate, but notice that the current going through each of these is the same as what we calculated as going through the 36 ohm equivalent resistance. That's 0.444444 amps, or 4 ninths of an amp if you prefer, and the other one was 8 ninths of an amp. Well, now you can get all of your voltage drops. Voltage drop across resistor 1 is 8 volts. Well, resistor 2 has the same value as resistance 1, and it has the same current, of course, because it's in series, so it's also going to be 8 volts. And the voltage drop across resistor 3 is going to be the current that's going through it times its resistance. Well, that current is 0.444 amps. Its resistance is 24 ohms. That becomes a voltage drop of 10.666667 volts across this 24 ohm resistor. And then across the 12 ohm resistor, you do the same thing again, V4 equals I4, R4, and that's going to become 5.333333 volts for the voltage drop across resistor 4. And notice that these two voltage drops add to 16 volts. These two voltage drops also add to 16 volts. You have a total of 16 volts 
going this way, a total of 16 volts going this way. Again, these are just two different waterfalls starting from the top of the same cliff, traveling down the same cliff to the bottom, except the, it's like the one with the 9 ohm and the 9 ohm, the waterfalls are broken into two parts that each have equal heights, whereas the 24 and the 12 ohm, it's like you have a long waterfall and then you have a short little waterfall. But either way, by the end of each of these pair of waterfalls, you're at the bottom of the cliff, so you have the same voltage drop each way. So that's how that makes sense. Also, notice when you go back that the total current that is going this way, well basically you have 8 ninths of an amp plus 4 ninths of an amp, that's 1.333 amps, that's the actual total current that was entering this equivalent 12 ohm resistor, if you want to go back a few slides and finding that. So now, we're done with A. We noticed that we, we figured out, we had already figured out this one and this one, and now we've just figured out these other four. We're completely done with A. Now let's move on to part B of this circuit. Well, luckily part B, again, is less complicated. And, and notice now that I've just replaced A by its equivalent resistance, we have figured out everything there is to know about A. It's like, yeah, okay, we haven't figured out the power dissipated by each resistor, but I know you, can, you all can do P equals IV, PIV, and you know the current and the voltage drop, so that's just a simple calculation problem. If I were you, I would just outsource it to um, your second grade, grade brother or something like that. So anyway, resistor B we need to break back apart. Well, it was the equivalent of a 6 ohm resistor for part B of this circuit. Well, remember that that was a parallel between a 42 ohm actual resistor and a 7 ohm quote resistor. Remember, this is actually something that was um, broken down further. So again, we're, we're working our way back now in part B of this circuit. So, remember the, the voltage drop through part B was 24 volts and by the way that also means that this voltage drop is the same as across this 42 ohm resistor so since the 42 ohm resistor is a parallel part of B then that means the voltage drop across the 42 ohm resistor is 24 volts but that was one of the resistors we wanted that's what we called resistor 10 at the very beginning so now that we know the voltage drop through it, obviously we know the resistance through it because it's labeled. So we get the current that goes through it. So V equals IR, so I equals V over R. Again, I've used my subscript to label my particular resistor and everything. 42 volts divided by, sorry, 24 volts divided by 42 ohms becomes 0.571 amps. So in case you're wondering what that fraction is, that fraction turns out to be, well, 24 divided by 42, that has a common factor of 6, so that becomes 4 sevenths. So that's actually 4 sevenths of an amp. So 0 0.571 amps. And also, it's good to know that the current going through the 7 ohm resistor is 3.429 amps, or 3 and 3 sevenths of an amp. So that's good to know because we already know the voltage drop is 24 volts, but knowing the current going through it allows us to see what happens when we break this down a little bit further. So that's what we're going to do here. Remember, the 7 ohm resistor wasn't really a 7 ohm resistor. It was actually a 3 ohm resistor in series with something that had the equivalent resistance of 4 ohms. But we know the current that was going through this 7 ohm resist, quote resistor. We just calculated it. It was 3 and 3 sevenths of an ohm, or sorry, of an amp. So that means that that must be the same current that's going through this 3 ohm resistor. First it goes through the 3 ohm resistor, then it goes through the 4 ohm quote resistor, and then, then back to ground. So we now know that that current is 3.429 amps. And it just so happens that the, and actually this, this should say I, well yeah, this is I7, but it's the current going through the 3 ohm resistor. We happen to call this the uh, resistor 7. So please do not get this confused with the current through the um, 7 ohm equivalent resistor, which happens to be the same because of the fact that it's 
composed of series parts. So anyway, we called the 3 ohm resistor resistor 7, and it so happens that um, resistor 7 is in series with something else, and we called that whole thing just, that, that whole thing has an equivalent resistance of 7 ohms. But anyway, current through resistor 7 is 3.429 amps, or 3 and 3 sevenths of an amp, just like what we had before. But now we can find the voltage drop. This is a calculation, V equals IR. So V through resistor 7 equals the current through resistor 7 times the resistance of resistor 7. Multiply those together, and you get 10.286 volts. That's 10 and 2 sevenths of a volt, in case you're interested in what the fraction is. So now we have that. We can also now figure out the net or the the voltage drop across the 4 ohm equivalent resistor just by we know that there's a net current of 3.429 amps going into it so therefore the voltage drop is 13.714 volts in other words it's like you have a cliff that is 13.714 volts high well it turns out that you might remember in fact in fact you do remember if you go back to your original picture that that 4 ohm equivalent resistor was actually a parallel element between a 20 ohm resistor and a 5 ohm resistor. So whatever voltage drop this has, whatever height this has, is the same as the height or voltage drop in each of the individual parallel arms of this circuit element. Well, those two resistors are what we called R8 and R9. So we're just about done. We know the voltage drop across those. They're, they're in parallel. We just calculated it for this whole thing, but it's parallel, so it's the same for each one. 13.714 volts. So now we can figure out the current going each way. Well, V equals IR, so I equals V over R. Plug in the numbers, you get 2.743 amps through the 5 ohm resistor, which we called resistor 8. And you get a current of 0 0.686 amps through the 20 ohm resistor, which we called resistor 9. And that is everything now. We're completely done with this. We've figured out the currents and voltage drops through every resistor in part A. We've now done so for every resistor in part B. So here is a table summarizing all of these results. And I have the resistor number, so resistor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and the value that it had, and the current going through it and the voltage drop across that resistor, as well as the slide out of the 15 solution slides that we had where you can find that result. Now keep in mind, in some of these results, these are um, results of derivations on like the previous slide or something, so you might have to go to, back to a little bit earlier in the video to see the full derivation of that. But I hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.